Hey YouTube, today I'm just tinkering with this piano, listening to some music, because in this episode we're taking a look at the Lego Ideas Grand Piano. Hi guys, and welcome to Brick Talk TV. Terry here, and in today's episode we're going to be reviewing this Lego Ideas Grand Piano set, set number 21323. This set came out in August 2020 and is part of the LEGO 18 Plus range aimed at adult fans. It consists of 3,662 pieces and currently retails for around £319.99 in the UK. Designed by LEGO fan Donnie Chen as part of the LEGO Ideas programme, this model achieved the 10,000 nominations and survived a round of reviews by LEGO designers and was chosen to be made into a real set. So the building experience, this set consists of 21 sets of bags. You start by building the base of the main piano unit, putting in the housing for the power packs, motor and sensor. Then you build out more of the casing, which gives the unusual shape for the instrument. The shape also includes a side door to access the motor and the, the string placement, uh, and also the inner aesthetics of the piano itself. Then you move through to building the legs and the pedals for the dampener. After that, you then build out the keys. Um, I found this process does last for several bags, probably around five, and it can seem like you're working in a piano factory. And it was probably my least favorite part of the build as it was quite monotonous. And that says a lot for me because I actually enjoyed the monotony of the roller coaster pillars in the Lego roller coaster set. So maybe that says something. Next is the lid that goes over the keys and, and the part that allows you to prop up the sheet music and where you can rest your phone when you're playing with it. You then move on to the main lid and finally onto the seat. So let's flip over now and walk through some of the features that I've mentioned already as part of this build and I'll show you the finished model. So here we have the finished model. You can see that it's quite, um, quite a size and it really has some sort of focal point when you stick it on a table like this. It really draws the eye uh, and it's quite stark against the, the background we've got here. So at the front you can see this is the, the seat um, you've got the keys along here, and then this is the, the rest of the, the playing unit. The door to access the power unit is actually located around here. So if you rotate this around here, you can flip open this door on the side here and you can gain access to the power pack. And uh, you can remove it from there and change the batteries if you need to, or you can then press the button to connect it to your app on your phone. The, the uh, piano is on wheels, so you can rotate it around like this and it works quite well just to position it into the exact position that you want. This is the front drawer here, which falls down and it covers the keys up if you wish. And then this stick here, you can remove and flap down and you can shut that as well if you want. So if you're trying to display this maybe in a, on a shelf that has a, a restricted height, you can also collapse it so it fits on there quite nicely as well. And I'm yet to test whether I can fit my piano on my designated area uh, as I wish. And this lid actually closes up. So if you wanted to remove the sheet music, knock, knock this down here out, and then you can actually shut the, uh, shut the piano fully like that. So that's what it looks like when it's closed up. Um, let's just move this to the side a second and we'll come back to the piano. So as I mentioned, the, um, the seat is the last part of the build. And this um, actually, when I was building this, it did remind me of my school days where uh, we used to have a piano in the assembly hall because this is exactly the same uh, authentic design for a, a piano seat. So it's got some Technic pieces inside. So there's a mechanism that allows you to raise and lower the seat based on the person that's playing, um, playing the piano's height and uh, reach for their legs. And you just turn the, these pieces on the side, rotate them around to elevate the seat up, as you can see here, and then it goes up quite high. And then if you want to rotate it down, you just go back like that. This is the, as I said, this is the last thing you build on the on this build. Uh, it's quite a nice little end, end to it as well, which um, I quite enjoyed. Um, so look out for that one at the end. So let's flip back to the actual uh, main piano now. So once it's all opened up back again, um, you can see that one thing I think that some people that have OCD may, uh, may be annoyed about is the fact that obviously your fingerprints are quite easily seen on a black tile. So you may wish to uh, wipe it down at some point once you place it just to get rid of those um those finger stains um but they're quite easy to uh to remove and but they're also quite easy to put onto this uh this particular model uh when i originally saw this uh coming out i wasn't overly keen on actually purchasing it, it didn't really spark much imagination in, in for me um but as as it had come out um, and i was looking at more uh, pictures of it and get, getting some more information about it 
I was intrigued to kind of buy it to see what the mechanism would look like. And actually it, it moves away from my standard enjoyment, which is usually modular buildings or city buildings. Um, so I thought I'd give this one a go. Um, and although the price point was quite high, um, I did really enjoy it. Um, and I think there's a great level of detail in it that sort of uh, capt captivates you throughout your build. So I don't think you'll be disappointed uh, if you purchase this. Uh, if you've got a particular passion for pianos, especially, this is going to be a great build for you. And you'll you'll probably uh, reminisce about the uh, piano lessons you used to have um, when you were younger um, as you go through the build of this. So the, as I said, the detail is quite impressive. You start building uh, the base, which you can't see now underneath here, um, just to house the power units and the sensor that this, this particular model uses. As you build it out, some of the first things you place are actually the motor and the power unit. And this actually works by, uh, there's a sensor piece in here that senses when, um, when something moves inside here, which allows you then to use the app to actually play along with the music. Um, so it says when the keys are struck, so then it knows that you've hit, hit a note. It's not clever enough to know if you've hit the right note, of course, but it just registers that you have hit a note, so it syncs up with actually how you're playing. And I'll show you it playing at the end of this, this video, so, so um, keep an eye out for that and stay tuned. Then as you move through from building out the housing for the power unit and the sensor, you kind of then add a level of detail, so you start to, uh, to put in some of the... Um, the groundings for where the strings are going to go inside here. So the bit around the back where there's a level of detail, you start putting that in there. Uh, and then you start building out um, more around the, the walls of the actual unit itself here. Uh, then you put some legs on. Uh, so the legs at the bottom go on, uh, quite a standard easy build for those. They just slot into holes you've already predefined. And then you connect the pedal at the bottom here, which actually does work. So when you do lift the um, damp, dampener down, or put, push the pedal down, the um, there's some units inside here, which I'll show you, uh, that go up and down just to cut the music off, uh, cut the strings from vibrating. Then you move through to start building out the keys. Uh, and as I mentioned, this was um, probably the dullest part for me. It was quite repetitive. I mean, there's there's not a huge amount of keys here, but uh, I did feel, as I said in the earlier segment, that I was working in a, a piano factory for a little bit because I was constantly building the same um, keys over and over again and, and putting them into the same same way. So I probably would have liked to either seen a different maybe build technique for the keys if that was possible, or if not, maybe intersperse some of the key building with some of the other other elements, like building the lid or something like that, that you could have come back to um, just to break it up a bit because it was a little bit, um, a little bit dry. But I've seen on um, some other websites where people actually just knuckle down and just bulk built lots of the keys in one go. I didn't really think about it. I was probably watching TV while they built it um, because it, it does get a bit repetitive. So you can kind of switch off at that point. Uh, but that's probably the, the only downside to this, uh, this particular uh, model that I found. Once you've uh, built the keys uh, and they come as one unit, I'll show you that in a second. You then um, slot them into this shelf here and then you start to build out the front panel here, which you can pull out to, to pull the keys out if you want to in the future. And then you also build the lid, which slots in as well. And I'll take it apart in a second to show you how that works. You then build this piece going across here. Actually, when I did um, when I built this, it was quite hot, so it's in the summer. So um, I did have difficulty actually then clipping this piece into where it was supposed to go. Um, but I think that was because it was swollen, swollen slightly. The plastic was swollen in the heat slightly. Um, so you do get to build this. You get to put the strings in and add these other elements into the mechanism as well. Uh, and then finally, as you get through to the, the last bit before you build the seat, you actually then build the lid and put this prong in here. So it all comes together uh, fairly quickly. Um, it only took me um, about a weekend to build it, um, but all in all, it was a, a well-spent weekend. It's also worth noting the level of detail that they've put into this lid here, because you might notice there's actually a printed Lego piece here, which actually is the original Lego logo. So they've actually gone back to their original roots, um, just a hint of nostalgia there for the, the actual piece in the lid, um, which you can only see when you lift the lid up. And actually this printed piece here, it's not a sticker, it is printed, um, is actually a, a play there, which is actually composed by the person that actually designed this. So Donny Chen actually um, composed this piece of music and he is actually, him and his wife are actually um, piano pay players, um, and so this is what inspired him to build this model in the first place. So they've actually included um, a piece that he's written as part of this is the default piece, which is quite a nice touch just to stick it on there. Uh, I suppose this is similar to Barracuda Bay um, where the designer's dad's name was used as the, um, 
uses the in inside the uh, the uh, Pirates Inn on that one as well. So again, nice little nod to the, the designer there. And that is actually one of the songs you can play in the app as well. So again, another um, nice touch there. So then let's just take this apart now. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll put it back together and then I'll show you it actually working so you get a feel for that. And we'll I'll show you what it looks like on the app as well. So to start off with, there's some there's two pins that are located underneath here, which uh, secure it in. So you can pull these out just like this. So let's just take these out if I can find it. That then allows you to pull this, this front piece out. Um, if you lift the lid up first, again, it's just stuck in stuck in position with these two pieces here, so these Technic pieces here. So you can take the lid off. You can then pull the front piece out there, which sits across the front. Uh, and then that allows you to actually take the keyboard mechanism out. Um, so this is the monotonous bit that I found anyway. So if you remove this, this piece out here, then you're left with, uh, you know, just a shelf of the carcass here. So you get to see inside here, there's, there's the mechanism that rotates around here. So when you're playing this or getting the piano to play itself, uh, this bar across this bit here, which hopefully you can see actually just rotates around. Um, and there's some Technic pieces there that are in certain positions and that hits, strikes the keys to make it look like the piano is playing the particular song. Um, so again, one of the downsides of, of this is probably that it, it is just playing the same pattern over and over again. So it doesn't change if you play a different song, um, but I'm sure you won't really notice that unless you're really eagle eyed and, and keeping your eye on the keys. Uh, but generally that will just uh, make it appear look like it's uh, playing on its own. Uh, so then if I just move this to the side, so in terms of the keys, this is the mechanism being used. So as you strike this, you can see that the, the key underneath raises up, so it's like a seesaw mechanism, and this strikes the hammer, which is this piece here, which is then obviously hitting the uh, hitting the strings inside the, the keyboard. As I mentioned earlier, I was doing this when it was quite hot, so I found that my keys were sticking a little bit um, and not coming back up, and I still see that a little bit now, so some of these keys, when you strike them, taking their time to, to come back up. So I think I've built it correctly um, because it is fitting in the right places, but it feels like there could have been just a little bit more weight maybe on some of these keys, just to make sure that um, they were coming back down when they should do. And there wasn't so much of a delay going on. Uh, but overall, it's actually quite fun just to see how the uh, a real mechanism of a, of a piano may actually work in, in, uh, in real life. So apart from it being a little bit tedious, I actually did enjoy the overall build. So let's put this keyboard back in now and I'll show you it actually working. So let's, uh, let's have a go at making this thing work. Um, let me just lift up the keys so you can see that now, put it all back together. Um, I was actually thinking that probably a really nice idea now would be to uh, to build a pianist that could sit here. Um, so it looked like somebody was actually playing it. So I'm tempted to build an Elton John or something like that to actually position the figure um, sat on here over, but that might be a bit more of a challenge, but uh, watch this space to see if I do anything like that. So let's flip over to the, um, to the iPhone app. Hopefully you've got the app already for the various power up uh, sets that are out there already. Uh, let me just open up this side panel here and turn on the motor, wait for that to connect. So then when you get into the app, you've got two options. You can either play it yourself based on some sheet music, which is different, or you can actually listen to the piano uh, and it will. you can choose from a section of songs and it will play those along. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just flip this out here and we'll put, put my iPhone into position. And what we'll try first off is just to listen. So we'll get the piano to play some music itself. You've got some, you've got 10 songs here that you can choose from for it to play. You've got Play Day, which as I said, is the designer's own piece of music, uh, Donnie Chen. You've got Prelude in C Major by Johann Spack. You've got a piece by Handel called Pasilla for Piano. Hopefully I've, I've said that right, I might not have done. Uh, you've got Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven. You've got Widmung by Franz Liszt. Again, may not have said that correctly. Claire de Lune by Claude Debussy. You've got The Entertainer by Scott Joplin. You've got Happy Birthday to You. You've got Jingle Bells and we've got We Will Wish You a Merry Christmas. So you can also see that they've aimed some of these songs at maybe some occasions that this set may be bought for. So if you're going to buy it for a Christmas present or for somebody's birthday, uh, they have the opportunity to actually play some songs that uh, are fit for the occasion for whatever you've purchased this particular set for. So let's just go for um, the entertainer because I quite like that. You just select the song, it flips through to the actual sheet music and then you just press the play button. So here we go.
and it just repeats the song and plays uh, the rest of it as well. So what's really good about getting it to play it itself is you get to really appreciate the mechanism. So as that's playing internally here, and I'll, I'll show you a, a segment in a second on the on this video, you'll start seeing the hammers striking the strings inside here. You'll see the dampers going up and down, and you'll see the whole mechanism working, which is um, a really good way just to get to, to look around the back and see what's going on. So if, you, uh, if you've never seen a piano properly playing, or if you sort of want to show your children, uh, it's quite a good way to introduce them into the um, characteristics of an actual uh, piano. And then the other option you've got is actually to play the music yourself. So if you click the play option on the app, this will reset itself so that it's ready for you to play. You can uh, you can play up to five different types of songs here. So you've got Wish, Me, uh, Wish You Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday again, you've got Jingle Bells, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Fur Elise by uh, Beethoven. So if we did, um, if we did a Fur Elise by Beethoven, it then loads the sheet music up and then what's happening now is it's the sensor is now going to check for where the keys are starting to be hit up and as it realizes i'm hitting the keys it will make the noise on the piano uh, up through the app of the piano so that's this is this is uh me now playing uh furley zone for beethoven so here we go There you go, and that's it uh, as it plays, as you hit the keys. You'll notice as when I'm hitting those keys as well, sometimes I don't uh, come back to where they should be, so they're slightly lower. Again, this is this is a bit of a disappointment, but um, this goes back to me earlier saying maybe some of the weights should be slightly heavier just to bring the keys back to the position that you'd expect. Again, I don't think I've built it incorrectly from what I can see on, on YouTube or through uh, through the instructions. Um, I think maybe maybe the heat is also having some effect on it and, and swelling some of the plastic, so maybe it's not striking back down where it should do. Uh, or maybe they could have constructed it slightly better, I'm not sure. But maybe there's some modifications out there. So anyway, that's how the uh, how the overall mechanism works and how you get to play it. I'll show you a couple of clips now where you can actually see some of the mechanism closer up um, and you can see it actually working. So let's have a look at those quickly now. And that's the piano in action. So this, as I mentioned, this build took me a weekend to build. Uh, I did it on and off through uh, different sessions. I didn't do it solidly for that weekend. Um, but the initial building of the instrument carcass uh, was fun. I really enjoyed doing the shape because I was interested to see how Lego would achieve that shape. Uh, as I already mentioned, the keys were a bit dull for me. Uh, I did, it did last quite a while, quite a few bags, uh, but there's a few intricate pieces to stick together. I did find um, a missing piece actually, uh, which was a one by two black uh, plate, which was missing in my set. But luckily I had something in my inventory. Uh, and I know a few people have, particularly in the US, have found that some of the, the pieces may have been um, broken uh, when they were arrived. So uh, do check those and, and make sure that you ask Lego for some replacements if that's the case for you. Um, I found some things a little stubborn to go in together. As I mentioned, this top piece here was a little stubborn to uh, press into where it should be. And even now it's still not quite sitting there properly. Again, I think maybe this is to do with the heat. I'm not too sure, but um, it is something that is uh, slightly annoying for me, but I'll, I'll get it um, shut down properly uh, soon. The keys under here are a little temperamental, so they're not always leveling up. And again, my OCD is probably just driving me to the, a little bit of distraction where the keys aren't quite sitting where they should be. Um, but I kind of have to live with that, I think. At the end of it, of course, you have a great looking set for display. Uh, connecting it to the Lego Power Up app is also simply genius, I think, um, because you can actually have fun as a piano. So it plays tunes and you can also play it yourself. 
uh, it's quite fascinating to watch as well um, and there's um, quite a few songs for you to choose from on the app hopefully they'll add some more songs in the future uh, because the selection is probably a little limited at the moment and I do hope they can get a bit more uh, more songs in there at some point but uh, I'm not sure if that's planned or not but I'm sure you'll be able to spend hours not just building this but also looking at the mechanism uh, and sitting back and just enjoying watching it play uh, so for now I'm probably going to stick this on my display shelf uh, that I've recently built as well uh, and I'm sure you'll just enjoy it uh, for many hours so to summarize then I probably would rebuy this if I was given the chance um, to purchase it again I, I would definitely snap up uh, the opportunity uh, I would probably break the key construction up um, so that it wasn't all done in one, one go. Other than that, um, I would thoroughly recommend that you purchase this set for something different to do um, rather than building the uh, usual uh, sitcom scenes, uh, which is generally what most of the ideas seem to be these days. Um, so I hope you found this walkthrough and view interesting. If you did, smash the like button and hit that subscribe button with the bell notification turned on and you'll be notified of future reviews we do on this channel. And until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Thank <laughs> you.